everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in to another video. If you've been following along with the channel, you know that we have ordered some new rims for the car. We are still currently waiting on the rubber, so stay tuned for that. If you're new to the channel, you can go back, check out the last couple videos, you'll see what we got. Along with this video, you'll see what we got as well. But if you want a little more details on the rim, feel free to go back and check out that video. If you like what you see, leave us a thumbs up, maybe subscribe, share with your friends, all that fancy stuff. But for now, for this video, we're going to be talking about offset. It is one of the most simple and most confusing things that you can see and deal with with the car, in my opinion anyways, if that makes any sense. So I'll flip you around, show you what we're working with here, and hopefully I can help you guys out if you got any questions. All right, so the rims that we got are for my 2019 Mustang GT, mostly what this channel's focused on. So if you want to go back, check out some videos on that, feel free. But for demonstration purposes, for today's video, we are going to be looking at these rims and we're going to be talking about offset, back spacing and all that because to get the proper offset and make sure everything fits on your car can be a little bit confusing. Now keep in mind, I'm not a professional by any means. There is a bunch of websites out there where you can go and put in what rims you want, sizing and all that stuff and the vehicle you drive and they will give you numbers so you can see if they fit or not but if you don't have that option and you're just wondering how everything works i will try to explain it in this video for you all right so first thing you have to keep in mind is the size of your rim that you're ordering is not the size from top to bottom of the rim and what i mean by that is these are 20 by 10s this will go on the back of my car 20 by 10 inch rims, but if we put our tape measure on here, hook her on that side, you can see on this side, we are 21 and a half inches. That is because most, if not all, I'm like I said, I'm not a professional, most measure from inside to inside. So if you look, these are 20s. We'll put our 20 mark roughly there. And you can see on that side, it's a little bit sloped, so it's hard to measure proper, but that is roughly where your 20 inches is, is from inside to inside. And secondly, that goes for width-wise as well, not just your height. So if we stand these up, these are a 20 by 10. Same thing, if you measure edge to edge, we're at 11. And that is because they measure from the inside of these lips, basically where your tire will be hooked on with the bead. So if you put your tape measure inside, same as the other way, you can see you're at your 10 inches. So if you're under your car and you're measuring what space you have before you hit all your suspension and goodies under there, you say, okay, I got say 10 inches. If you order a 10 inch wide rim, it's not going to fit because you're going to gain whatever the lip is on each side. And just so you know, I'm not full of it. If you come over here to the Mustang, these are the stock performance pack wheels. They are a 19 inch rim. You can see here, it's a 275, 40, 19 on the rear. But if you measure it from edge to edge, oops, you are just a hair over 20 and a half. So, if you're over here with the tape measure and you're measuring you go, okay, well I have in this case 27 inches before I hit the fender. If you're just eyeballing things, so you think, okay, I got 20 inch rims. That leaves me seven inches for rubber and I still fit under the fender. You're going to be sadly in for a big surprise when your tire goes on because you're going to be rubbing away. Same goes for your width. Like I said, Width-wise, depending on your offset, which we're going to talk about now, you may run into issues rubbing on the inside of the car. All right, so to start off with your measurements, everything is measured off of the center of your rim. So we said from here to here is 10 inches. So wherever 5 inches is, is the center of your rim, and that is where all these measurements come off of. So for your offset, if it's a positive offset, everything will move to the outside of the car. So outside of your rim, outside of the car. Negative offset obviously is the other way. Everything will move 
to the inside of your car. So in this case, the back offset on these wheels are 40 millimeters. So center point, 40 millimeters, you'll move it over and that is where your hub will be up against the wheel itself. So right here, the flat portion is 40 millimeters pushed out from the center of the rim. Now, if it was minus 40 millimeters, it would be closer to this side, which would push more of your rim to the outside of the car, where this is positive offset, which pushes more of the rim to the inside of the car. So because it's 40 millimeters is what, an inch and a bit, inch and a half. So we put it over an inch, which means now, or we'll use an inch just to keep the math easy. So if it's five from end to end, or 10 from end to end, you push it in an inch. Now you'll have four over here and six over here. So more of your rim ends up underneath your car in my case. And then that is where the backspacing part comes into play because now say you have this extra inch from here to here. So you're measuring from the middle. If you think you have a five inch rim, so your backspacing would be five inches if you had zero offset, but you're missing the one inch. So to find your offset or your backspacing, sorry, you would lay the rim flat. We'll put it up just for a little example. And you would measure basically, we have cardboard and stuff under there, but you would want to measure from the ground up to the back portion here. And that is your backspacing. Reason that's important is obviously the bigger or smaller your rim gets. Like this is a 10 inch. We say, okay, just to keep it simple, we got five inches back here. If you go up to say a 12 inch, you gain an extra inch on both sides. Now you have an extra inch, right? So if you say, okay, I measure from my hub to your suspension where everything will fit. Say you have five and a half inches. Now you put this on five inches plus a half. Okay, she'll fit. But now you gain an extra inch from here. All of a sudden she doesn't fit. So if you're thinking, okay, maybe I got two inches of room left, you upgrade, get a wider rim. If you don't calculate in for here and here, plus wherever your offset ends up, obviously, you can adjust it. If your offset's a higher percentage, it's pushing everything this way. So that's gonna cut it off. But if you get a smaller offset or possibly even a negative offset, it's gonna shift everything to the outside of your car, which will give you more room for a bigger backspacing to fit in between your wheel and the suspension. Plus, obviously you gotta keep in mind, depending what wheel you get, you'll also get a little bit of a bulge from the rubber once rubber goes onto your rims. And then just to give you guys a little bit of a visual idea of how things work here, we'll use the car as an example. So right now I'm not exactly sure what the offset is for the Mustang. I do have spacers on there as well. So it pushed everything out. It's kind of like a cheat. If your offset is wrong, it's another option. You can throw a spacer on there just to adjust a little bit here and there where you want it. But for an example here, positive offset, like I said, everything comes this way, which shoves the remainder of your rim inside the car. So more of your rim is gonna be tucked underneath. With the positive offset, you're gonna get more of a flush look here. If you go the opposite way, negative offset, where the hub meets the wheel is going into the car, which in turn pushes most of your rim to the outside of the car. So if I had a negative offset on here, this setup wouldn't work because you can see how tight it is here. Everything would get pushed out. Your wheel might sit somewhere out here and you would be hitting your fender on every single bump and turn you did and it just wouldn't work. Unless, like I said, I do have spacers on here, 25 mil spacers. So if I had 25 millimeter different offset, it would push it out, but then I would negative the inch that I have in there with that. So it would all go and kind of even itself out, but that's just kind of the quick rundown positive. You're gonna be 
nice and flush. Everything's tucked under the car, negative. Everything's gonna be coming out from the car. So just keep that in mind when you're looking for your own. And then one other little side note, if you're looking for, I know it's very popular right now, the, the concave wheels, you can see these ones aren't huge on the concave, but that is more so because of the way they're designed, which keep in mind, it's not only to do with the offset, it is also to do with the design of the wheel. You can see this is kind of flat here before it decides to curve in to our center portion here where your hub will be. But if you get a wheel where it starts to slope right away down to the middle, you'll get a lot more of a concave look than these will have. So keep in mind, it's partially to do with the offset. Obviously, if you have a really high offset and your hub is way out here, there's no room to give you a concave look. Whereas if you're to get more, say you have a negative offset and everything is sitting way back here, it is gonna push your rim out. So it'll be sitting past your fender possibly. Some people like that look, some people don't. But if you're looking for the concave look, I would say that's more to do with the design of the rim over the back spacing and offset of the wheel. And well guys, that'll about do it for this video. Hopefully I cleared up a little bit if you're confused on the offset of your wheels and how it all works. I hope this helped you out a bit. But if you wanna see what we ordered, the rubber should be here in a week or so, so stay tuned for that. I'll do a full review on what I picked and why I picked it. And then we'll see how she looks on the car finally once the weather smartens up, because we are still pouring rain out and we're still looking at a little cold snap coming up, so snow will be back, unfortunately. But for now, we're gonna get these all wrapped up, tuck them away in the box until the rubber gets here. So like and subscribe, stay tuned, and hopefully we catch you in the next video.